Number 50, letter A. What is the vapor pressure of water at 20 degrees Celsius? All right, so this one's actually really easy. You just got to look it up. All right, here, I mean, there's other ways to calculate it, but the uh, book does not go into how to actually calculate it. So this one is just purely looked up. If you go to the table in the text, uh, this is the answer. So that's letter A. 2.33 times 10 to the third Pascals. That's the vapor pressure of water at 20 degrees Celsius. All right. Man, if only all the problems were like that, right? Letter B. What percentage of atmospheric pressure does this correspond to? Okay. So remember basic percentages. Anytime you're dealing with a percent, you're talking about the part divided by the whole times 100. So we know that the vapor pressure of water at 20 degrees Celsius is 2.33 times 10 to the third, or roughly, you know, 10 to the third is about a thousand there, right? So roughly about 2000. And then the uh, pressure or atmospheric pressure, right, at sea level is about 1.01 times 10 to the fifth Pascal, or roughly about 100,000. So basically, whichever one's smaller you place on the top, that'll be the part. Whichever one's larger you place on the bottom, that's the whole. And then you just multiply it by 100. All right. Fairly straightforward. So let's plug it in. So this is 2.33 times then 10 to the third, all then divided by 1.013. I'm going to go out an extra decimal there times 10 to the fifth. Multiply that then by 100 to convert that into the percent. And let's see what we get. So 2.33 times 10 to the third divided by 1.013 times 10 to the fifth. And multiply that by 100. And we get 2.3, right? I guess three sig figs, so 2.30%. Uh, All right. So this takes care of letter B. Let's look now at letter uh, C. So it says, what percent of 20 degrees Celsius air is water vapor if it has 100% relative humidity? And it also tells us the density then of the dry air. All right, at 20 degrees Celsius is this value. So again, what we're doing is we're going to be using this formula again, right? We have to, uh, we're going to be calculating percent. So we need part over whole multiplied by 100. Now, you know that air contains a whole bunch of things, right? Air, you know, atmospheric air, you know that it contains nitrogen gas, it's going to contain oxygen gas, it's also going to t contain a little water vapor here in terms of molecular H2O, right? So there's a couple of things. So the density that they told us is the overall density of air. And what we need to do is we need to find then to relate it to percent, right? We need to then find just the density of the water here in the air. So how do we do that? Well, they're telling us this thing about relative humidity. So I'm thinking, well, do I know a formula that deals with relative humidity? And I do, right? It's this one right over here, and it's abbreviated. This stands for the percent relative humidity is equal to the vapor density of the gas you're talking about, particularly water, then divided by the saturation vapor density. All right? So... This being the case, I'll write PRH is equal to the vapor uh, density divided by the saturation vapor density multiplied by 100. Now it tells us the relative humidity is 100%, right? So that means percent relative humidity is 100. That equals VD over SVD times 100. And what do you notice about the hundreds here? You can just cancel them, right? So basically now this fract this formula works down to 1 is equal to VD over SVD. And I can write multiply by 1 over there, but I don't, I'm not going to, all right, because it, it's not necessary. But you have to place the 1 here. Don't place a 0 here, right, because if you place a 0, that's, that means everything just went to 0. You need a placeholder. So um, now what I realize is that I can simply do a cross multiplication here, right? I can bring the SVD the saturation vapor density out of the, the denominator on the right, bring it up into the numerator on the left. And lo and behold, I have this equation that the saturation vapor density will equal the vapor density of water. Okay, that they're both equal. So if I can find one of these, then I can find the other. And that's part of the table. 
So if we go back at 20 degrees Celsius, not only do we know the vapor pressure of water, but we also know its saturation vapor density. Just be careful the units up here, this gram per meter cubed, all right? Um, that might be good for the problem, it depends, all right? It depends on what they're giving you. So here we know that then the saturation vapor density will be uh, 17.2 gram, and I'm gonna put in the units here so we don't forget, gram per cubic meter, and that's equal to then the vapor density of that water, okay, of water vapor. So now I have everything I basically need. All right, we're gonna move this on over to the side. I'm just gonna erase some of this so we have a little more space. And now we just need to calculate the percent, okay? So here, percent again is going to be equal part over whole times 100. We basically found the part, all right? That's what we were looking for, okay? So now, what I would recommend here is whenever you're calculating percents, you have to make sure that these units are the same. Percents are unit less, and therefore the units will cancel. So in order for the units to cancel, whatever the units are for the part will have to be the same as the whole. So if we analyze it a little bit, here they give us kilogram per cubic meter, and this is gram per cubic meter. So they are not the same. No big deal, that just means we have to do a conversion. Now, it does not matter which one you convert. If you converted this to gram, that would be fine and wonderful. If you converted this to kilogram, that would be fine and wonderful, all right? It does not matter, we're gonna arrive at the same answer. I'm gonna decide to convert this into kilogram, all right? So we have 17.2 grams per cubic meter, and I need to get rid of the gram, so the gram goes on the bottom, I know the relationship to kilograms, so I can put that on the top, and there's a thousand grams to one kilogram. Grams go bye-bye, and now we get a value of 0 0.0172 kilogram per cubic meter. Okay? And now this should kind of make sense. If you now compare the numbers, look at how much smaller this number is, this density is, than compared to the overall density of air. If you remember the picture I drew before, I was mentioning... And even if you remember some of the percents before, right? We said that air, uh, atmospheric air, is about 78% nitrogen gas. It's about 21% then uh, oxygen gas, and there's a couple other trace, you know, a couple other trace uh, molecules here. And one of the trace ones, a really really small one, all right, less than one percent basically, or or so, or right around one percent, is going to be water vapor. Okay, so I'll write really small H2O. So what we would expect is that per unit volume here, per this, just pretend that, you know, this circle encapsulates a volume, all right? It's a three-dimensional sphere. Per this volume, there should be a certain mass of nitrogen, oxygen, and water, right? And I know that the nitrogen is different than the oxygen, and the oxygen is different than the water and such, but uh, although that's the case, this is such an overwhelmingly large percent that we know most of the mass, okay, of the air is going to be uh, nitrogen. Then the runner-up is going to be oxygen. And then after that, probably the water, all right, probably water vapor. So look at the numbers here. You got, you're comparing about two hundredths, okay, two hundredths roughly, to 1.2. Okay, so let's see how much larger one is than the other. I mean, we might already have a feeling of it's going to be quite small, quite a small percent, but why don't we see? So we're going to have 0 0.0172, all divided then by 1.20 times 100. And here we go. So we have 0 0.0172 divided by 1.2. And we get, and then multiply that by 100, and we're going to have about 1.43, 1.43. All right, that's percent. Very, very small percent. Like I was mentioning, somewhere around one. I, you know, usually, I mean, uh, the percent relative humidity fluctuates of the air, but normally it's not always at 100%, right? It's less than that. Okay, it definitely depends if it's summertime or wintertime. You know, the percent relative humidity changes, right? As the seasons change, warmer temperatures holds actually more water vapor, colder temperatures, there's less water vapor, all right, in the air. Um, yeah, in any case, that takes care of this. Guys, hopefully this helps. Please help us out and subscribe. Tell your friends, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.